Hello friends, in this video lecture, I am going to discuss with you about the Doppler broadening under the lesser topic. We have covered before this many topics associated with laser and you can watch those video lecture by clicking the i button in the right corner of the screen and I will also provide the link in the description of this video lecture so you can kindly visit that link and watch the video lecture so myself Virendra Kumar professor and scientist and and I will teach you about the Doppler broadening under the inhomogeneous line broadening mechanism so friends you know already that in a gas atoms move in a random fashion and when a moving atom interacts with electromagnetic radiation the apparent frequency of the wave is not the same but it became different from that seen from a stationary atom so this is called the doppler effect and the broadening caused by this is termed as the doppler broadening so basically the doppler broadening is the broadening of spectral lines due to the doppler effect caused by or distribution of velocities of atoms or molecules different velocities of the emitting particles result in different doppler shift so we will take the cumulative effect of the all which is the line broadening then broadening depends only on the frequency of the spectral line the mass of the emitting particles and their temperature now we will find out the line shape function for the doppler broadening in order to obtain the line shape function g omega in case of doppler broadening we will assume only the doppler broadening and neglect the natural broadening and collision broadening so let us consider radiation of frequency omega passing through a collection of atoms which have a resonant frequency omega naught so the radiation frequency is omega and the resonant frequency of atoms is omega naught and which the atom move randomly in order that an atom may interact with the incident radiation it is necessary that the apparent frequency seen by the atom in its frame of reference be omega naught if the radiation is assumed to propagate along the z direction then the apparent frequency seen by the atom having a z component of velocity vz will be given by apparent frequency omega is equal to omega into 1 minus vz by c so this is apparent frequency of the atoms seen by the atom having a z component of velocity vz hence for a strong interaction the frequency of the incident radiation must be such that omega is equal to omega naught so if this condition is fulfilled then only the intra strong interaction between the radiation and atoms is possible this implies that omega into 1 minus vz by c is equal to omega naught this gives omega is equal to omega naught 1 minus vz by c to the power 1 that gives omega naught into 1 plus vz by c here we have neglected the higher order of this quantity because we have assumed that vz is very very less than c therefore the effect of the motion is to change the resonant frequency of the atom so ultimately what happens that the resonant frequency of the atom changes because of this doppler effect so ultimately we have omega is equal to omega naught into 1 plus vz by c 
now in order to find the line say function g omega due to doppler broadening we note that the probability of of an atom that has z component velocity lying between vz and vz plus dvz is given by this probability is given by p vz into d vz is equal to m by 2 pi kt to the power 1 by 2 into exponential minus m vz square by 2 kt into d vz so here capital m is the mass of atom and t is the absolute temperature of the gas so we have p vz d vz is equal to m by 2 pi k t to the power 1 by 2 exponential minus m v z square by 2 k t into d v z hence the probability g omega d omega that the transition frequency lies between omega and omega plus d omega is equal to the this probability that this z component of the velocity of the atom lies between vz and d vz plus dvz where omega is equal to omega not 1 plus vz by c that gives vz is equal to omega minus omega not by omega not into c thus this line say function probability is given by c by omega not m by 2 pi kt to the power 1 by 2 exponential minus m c square by 2 kt into omega minus omega not whole square by omega not square so we just substituted the value of this bz in this equation we get this expression which corresponds to a gaussian distribution the line shape function is picked at omega not and we can calculate the full width half maximum for this gaussian distribution that will be thus the gaussian distribution g omega is directly proportional to the exponential minus mc square by 2k bt into omega minus omega not all square by omega not square therefore the full width at half maximum for this gaussian distribution is given by exponential minus mc square by 2 kt into omega minus omega not whole square by omega not square is equal to 1 by 2 which gives mc square by 2 kt omega minus omega not square by omega not square is equal to log of 2 that means omega minus omega not square is equal to 
टू के टी बाई एम सी स्क्वायर इंटू ओमेगा नॉट स्क्वायर इंटू लॉग टू इम्प्लाइज दैट ओमेगा माइनस ओमेगा नॉट प्लस माइनस इज इक्वल टू टू के टी बाई एम सी स्क्वायर लॉग ऑफ टू टू दी पावर वन बाई टू ओमेगा नॉट एंड दे आर फोर फुल विट्स एट हाफ मैक्सिमम इज गिवेन बाई डेल्टा ओमेगा दैट इज इक्वल टू टू टाइम्स ऑफ दिस दिस वैल्यू दैट इज के टी बाई एम सी स्क्वायर लॉग ऑफ टू टू दी पावर वन बाई टू इन टू मेगा नॉट दैट इज इक्वल टू एट के टी बाई एम सी स्क्वायर लॉग ऑफ टू टू दी पावर वन बाई टू इन टू ओमेगा नॉट सो दिस इज द हाफ इट एट फुल मैक्सिमम वैल्यू इन केस ऑफ डॉपलर ब्रॉडनिंग एंड इन टर्म्स ऑफ डेल्टा ओमेगा वी कैन राइट द जी ओमेगा एज जी ओमेगा डी ओमेगा इज इक्वल टू सी बाई ओमेगा नॉट एम बाई टू बाई के टी टू दी पावर वन बाई टू एक्सपोनेंशियल माइनस एम सी स्क्वायर बाई टू के टी ओमेगा माइनस ओमेगा नॉट होल स्क्वायर बाई ओमेगा नॉट स्क्वायर दैट बिकम्स इक्वल टू टू सी बाई डेल्टा ओमेगा इन टू टू के टी बाई एम सी स्क्वायर इन टू लॉग टू टू दी पावर वन बाई टू इन टू एम बाई टू पाई ए टी टू दी पावर वन बाई टू इन टू एक्सपोनशियल माइनस एम सी स्क्वायर बाई टू के टी ओमेगा माइनस ओमेगा नॉट स्क्वायर बाई ओमेगा नॉट स्क्वायर वी हैव यूज द वैल्यू फॉर ओमेगा नॉट इज इक्वल टू दिस वॉट वी डिराइव यूर लियर सो दिस जी ओमेगा डी ओमेगा बिकम्स टू बाई डेल्टा ओमेगा लॉग ऑफ टू बाई पाई टू दी पावर वन बाई टू एक्सपोनशियल माइनस एम सी स्क्वायर बाई टू के टी इन टू ओमेगा माइनस ओमेगा नॉट होल स्क्वायर बाई ओमेगा नॉट स्क्वायर डी ओमेगा दैट इज इक्वल टू टू बाई डेल्टा ओमेगा लॉग ऑफ टू बाई पाई टू दी पावर वन बाई टू एक्सपोनशियल माइनस एम सी स्क्वायर बाई टू के टी फोर बाई डेल्टा ओमेगा स्क्वायर इंटू टू के टी बाई एम सी स्क्वायर लॉग टू इंटू ओमेगा माइनस ओमेगा नॉट होल स्क्वायर ब्रैकेट क्लोज दे आर फोर we get g omega d omega is equal to 2 by delta omega log of 2 by pi to the power 1 by 2 exponential minus 4 log of 2 omega minus omega not whole square by delta omega whole square d omega so this is the line shape function for the 
Doppler broadening. Now we will see by diagram that on a comparative plot of a Lorentzian and Gaussian line having the same full width at half maximum. So we can see that for the both Gaussian and Lorentzian FWHM is same. It can also be seen that the peak value of the Gaussian is more and Lorentzian is less in comparison to the Gaussian and Lorentzian has the wider tail. So friends, this is all about the Doppler broadening. During all the discussion of the line broadening mechanism, we have considered one broadening at a time. But in general, all the broadening mechanism used to happen simultaneously. Resultant line shape function can be evaluated by performing a convolution of the different line shape function together. So friends, I hope that you enjoyed this video lecture and understood about the Doppler broadening. And if you like this video lecture, please press the like button. And if you have not subscribed the SI Academy channel, till now, please subscribe the SI Academy channel and share this video with your friends and colleagues so that they can also learn about the Doppler broadening. Friends, stay tuned and enjoy learning. Thank you.